27 years old. Um, I live at the Larsh community, and uh, today I'll be reading the passage uh, from Exodus, Moses and the Burning Bush. It's uh, chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and a broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Amorites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. So this is my favorite passage, um, and it's been my favorite passage for a long time. Uh, it first struck me probably when I was a teenager, and it, it's kept coming back to me in various places and various times in my life, and each time I feel like I unwrap a little bit more, or I hear a little bit more about it from someone else that reveals something new to me about it, right? This is, this is one of the cool things about the Bible, that you can unwrap more and more of it as you grow older. Um, one of the first things that struck me was the way God names himself. He says, I am who I am, right? He says, I, actually he says that in the next passage, so I'm cheating a little bit, but he says, I am who I am. So he wants to be named to the Israelites. He's saying, I want to be in a personal relationship with you. I want you to know me, but he's also saying, you can't quite know me as much as you wish you could. There's a lot about me that's completely mysterious that you'll never understand. You won't understand at this point. Um, will we ever understand? I don't know. Um, so it's this tension of like personal relationship, but yeah, like com beyond knowledge, which was helpful when I was a teenager, and I, I felt like all these messages I was getting from religion was. God is this, God is that, this is what God says, this is who God is, I know who God is, I'm going to tell you. So this idea of a God of mystery who is relational but also ineffable was really appealing to me. Um, so uh, I spent some time in the community of Teze, and so I have a very precious memory surrounding um, this passage when all the female volunteers who were living there together got together to discuss this passage. And we talked about how Moses is called, right? He, um, and he turns aside. That's the key passage. Okay, here's a burning bush. Like, it's, it's utterly strange 
but he could have just walked right past it. But it says that when he turns aside to look at it, that's when God calls out to him. Um, and then, of course, um, he later, you know, God later says, I'm calling you to do this. And Moses says, me? I can't do this. What are you talking about? Like, I'm the wrong person to pick. But God still says, it's you, you know, um, because I'm going to do something through you. And um, the last thing that I really enjoy about this passage is just the whole encounter of the fact that he's asked to take off his shoes. First of all, the voice from the bush says, stop, don't come any closer. But it's not a pushing away, it's saying, wait, think about where you are, think about what is about to happen, what you're about to encounter. And he's asked to take off his shoes as a sign of that. And what happens when we're barefoot? Like, we're more sensitive to what's going on. We can feel what, what we're walking on. We're less likely to, like, tread all over things. And so, um, a question I ask of myself when I read this passage is, what is holy ground in my life? What is holy ground in my relationships? Are there places in my relationships where I need to take off my shoes and be barefoot?